what's going on? Um, you know, the Umar and the professional coons have distracted me from uh, my main goals. Even though my channel's not dedicated to that, I kind of let people know that before anyways with the, uh, the video about what this channel is all about. Because it's not about getting into that segment of YouTube, so to speak. You know, there, there are dedicated channels that bang on those individuals for <laughs> forever and only. Mine is about getting black people on the right track. And no, I'm not trying to be a leader. I don't want to be a leader, but I am a man with the plan and a man with the ideas. You know? Everybody else can be out front all they want to. You know, I, I just like to stay behind the scenes and, and develop the plan. Because I have a sound plan. I mean, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. That, that's what we don't need to do. The game plan is already out there. But tonight I want to talk about black beauty. And I'm bringing this up because there was talk about that French Montana incident. And I was watching the video by Jason Black, Black Authority, who was another individual who I might evaluate one day because uh, I've been listening to him for a whole lot of years. And I thought he was real. But like a lot of people, you break them down. Man. See, I, again, I don't just listen to one video and say, okay, these people are phony. I, I, I don't do that. I listen for years. Some people are more convincing than others. So it kind of uh, takes longer. You know, sometimes you might let your guard down and you're like, okay, these people are with it. But see, I always keep in my mind, why are these people giving me videos every day about everything that's going on in the world and in their lives? That's what I start thinking. I know some of you might say, hey, well, now you're giving videos every day. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I just happen to be on a roll. You know, sometimes I take a break. But uh, these people are here every day. So, I, I, you know, I'll be getting into that in, in a minute. Well, not in a minute, in the future. But I watched the video about the French Montana that he did. And I think those females who were commenting that he was playing the audio from, I think that's from the Irritated Genies uh, platform on Blog Talk. Uh, who I did call, I, you know, it's a show I listened to, I haven't listened to in a, in a minute. Sometimes you, you try to get through. <laughs> Sometimes they're like, let's take calls, and they keep talking for another half hour or something like that. But anyways, they're cool. But, um, you know, he was talking about French Montana. He did make some astute observations, and I always tell people this every, um, for years, with French Montana since he emerged on the scene and got popular with it, whatever, however he did it. We, we, we can, we can speculate how he did it. I mean, obviously he's the only one who rose the fame and others went to prison, but he did the crime though. But, um, you know, I always said this with French Montana, you always heard him call himself a Moroccan an African. And you always heard, him say that his son is black and his woman is black, but you never heard him say that he is black. And when people get into that area, I look at his face and he kind of looks like he doesn't want to uh, uh, be called black, even though black authority kept calling him an Arab. But the truth is, man, those people in North Africa are mixed. You can see the black on French Mon in French Montana, but he may not think of himself as black because he may think of himself as a so-called Arab or a so-called Berber. Original Berbers are black. Later ones are mixed. It's just like uh, black Americans, Jamaicans. Then you got uh, mixed ones, uh, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, and some Dominicans. I mean, come on. You know, that, that's all we're dealing with here. So... That got me to thinking about black beauty because some of the females were commenting on, uh, you know, they like, they defend uh, light skin guys and uh, they would still get with a French Montana and then they were going along talking about 
putting black men down and you got Charlemagne the coon. He's been cooning ever since he got on radio. See, guys like him, man. Damn, I, I mean, you, now you know I'll never be on, on The Breakfast Club. I probably wouldn't go on there if, if invited anyways. Because Charlemagne's been cooning out ever since he, he got on the scene with Wendy Williams, man. I mean, it's one thing to be funny. Which he's not really that funny. He's just obnoxious. Uh, it's one thing to be funny, but being a coon, that's a different situation. Being anti-black. That crosses over the coonery, especially the way he does it, you know, and that's not cool, man. I mean, uh, just because French Montana's rapper don't let the man off the hook. I had never heard anybody ask if he was a black man. That's what I would ask the guy. Fuck all this beating around the bush stuff. Don't 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 worry about your son. Is your son black because you're with a black woman or is your son black because you are black? Then if he says I'm an Arab, then we got to get into what that is. See, the man called the Black Authority, my man couldn't even explain what an Arab was. He just kept on calling him an Arab. And I get detailed into the stuff because I want even the people who think that they're educated to get educated on what an Arab is and what an Arab is not. And I have a feeling, I think I'm going to be collaborating with people to put out some real educational videos on these these matters. And, uh, you know, once, uh, you know, we finalize that situation, no, there's no money involved. Once we finalize, finalize that situation, I'll probably let people know that. Maybe not. Maybe you'll just find it somewhere. And then, uh, you know, you'll be enlightened. But it, it damn sure won't be no Tariq Nasheed, Umar Johnson BS. You know, because that's all a bunch of games and BS. So... Whenever you hear me on the TRS show, which I, you know, I, I, I'm on there more for entertainment more than any knowledge, because if you've been on there for six months to a year, <laughs> you kind of know it's not about talking real solutions. But when I'm on there, people always bring up Arabs. They call anybody from a so-called Arab country an Arab, just like they make the mistake in calling anybody who speaks Spanish Spanish. I'm like, this is crazy. Even if they speak Portuguese, they call them Spanish. Or they call them Latino, but you never call an Italian Latino. So I'm, I'm going to break all that down. But this is why I always bring up the Turks. Because they are very important. Because you cannot leave out Turks when you're talking about Arabs. Arabs came and took, they started Islam. Took over all the, you know, the so-called Arab countries. Into the Northwest Africa, where French Montana is from. The Berbers were black at the time. You look at Senegal. When you see those people, those are the true Moors, Berbers. That's what they all look like at one time. Yeah, you had a little mixing because Rome had the uh, situation after, uh, beforehand. But even those people were the natives. And I'm going to point that out in this video I'm going to make when I collab. And uh, we're black. Spain was black. All this was black. So... We got to get into what an Arab is and what an Arab is not, which I'm not going to do right here. And a lot of reasons uh, I don't like doing uh, some things is because I want you to go look into it on your own. A lot of black people who haven't graduated high school or even college, their guide is TV, YouTube videos. Watch one YouTube video misleading you. Aha, I've got it. Then you think you're a genius. You go regurgitate that to somebody else talking the talk that you heard in the video but you didn't do the research on your own and some of you might do the research and you may not have you see when you do all this man it takes years and years and years of studying because you have to be good at the geography discern different cultures discern different uh time periods different countries and you have to be able to discern the artwork if someone were to put Let's say, I'm, I'm going to give you a hard one, uh, <laughs> Phoenician artwork in front of you. You would have to be, if you know this stuff, you should be able to tell that it's Phoenician. But I bet you most people won't be able to tell that Phoenician artwork is Phoenician because most of you are going to think it's Egyptian. Which goes to show you the 
the influence that Egypt had because obviously a popular country like ancient Egypt, you think everything's just going to be confined to Egypt itself? I mean, look at Arabia. Their culture is spread out. Italy, the culture, uh, or should I say Rome, ancient Rome, that culture is spread out. The British, that spread out. So why wouldn't Egypt, Egypt spread out? So you got to do a whole lot of studying, man. YouTube videos alone, especially just one, is not going to do it. But you can't dismiss YouTube videos altogether unless it's from people with agendas where a lot of people have angles, you know. I just try to give you the raw facts. And, you know, I don't like to come with an angle. But people like the Tariq Nashis, the Sarnettas, those kind of people, they attack people like me because we just giving it to you straight, raw, with no angle. And they think it's messing up their money. That's what it is. I'm not, now I'm going to tell you this again. I'm not trying to mess up anybody's money. I don't care about people getting paid. If they can get paid, so be it. I just don't like people leading black people on thinking that, oh, I need this money for you. This is the people's money. No, it's for you. So, you know, it is what it is. People, they keep giving, so be it. You know, I already know if people, if you find suckers who give so you can keep up a lavish lifestyle, then, I mean, I guess like religion, you know, it's hard to talk people out of it. And that's not my job. I'm not trying to talk anybody out of it. And before I continue with the main topic, let me just say this. Because some people say, you're begging for money too. And I always put in the comments, no, I'm asking for money, not begging. What's the difference? Sir, ma'am, I have my GoFundMe. Uh, my GoFundMe. Uh, here is the amount, of, uh, if you can give, give. But you don't see me going on it, on it over and over and over again. Begging, see, if you give, you give, that's cool. But if you don't give, you don't see me coming back and saying, people, we need this, people. Even though we do need what I'm trying to get into. But I can't tell it all because, you know, you got coons out here, man. They, they, they're now with it. You got to keep something secret because you got to take incremental steps. Get the funding. Get the people. Then you got to start weeding out the real from the fake. And while you're doing that, you simultaneously put together the apparatus. Yeah, I'm not being detailed. People think, okay, well, because you're not being detailed, it's not a business. So there's no need to be detailed with it. But it's a structure for black people, certain black people. And once we have that structure in line, then we all can move on from there and in the future. And once we get a few people on board, then we lead by example and everybody else will follow and they will want to partake in this. But I'm not going to get into that right now. Once the donations roll in, then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, but um, others beg. They say we need this people. We could do 200 tonight. Uh, we got 15,000 uh, to go. I'm doing this new documentary, you know, that's begging when they keep on asking you and asking you and asking you. And then they all say, I will put, I could put the money in myself, you know, ain't no problem. But why are you asking for the money if you could put the money in for yourself? <laughs> I mean, if it ain't no problem, just do that and then you can save yourself a whole lot of time. But obviously, if they get free money like this, they're going to keep, keep doing it. So, um, back to the main topic. Main topic is black beauty. And uh, again, when it comes to black people, I could talk about a Tariq Nasheed. I could talk about a Professor Griff. I could talk about uh, a lot of black entertainers, black celebrities. And what am I talking about? I'm, ta I'm talking about black beauty or the black standard of beauty. There were two avenues, two sides. You have one side that says, if you talk black, then you need to marry or have a mate who is dark skinned or African looking, so to speak, or more original looking. 
And that's true to a point. But you don't have to take those uh, mates. But then there are those who, on the other side, say, hey, black is black if your uh, husband or wife has a white parent. So be it. If they're 80% white, who cares? I mean, black is black. But here's the question. Here's the issue. See, if you're a, a, a black power person, I use that because I don't know what to call these people or pro black, whatever you want to call them. Then you should. In theory, want to marry somebody who is black and black in appearance. I mean, what sense does it make for you to marry somebody who is white in appearance or white closer to white? You look at that Drake commercial with the uh, the, the liquor. Uh, he's a mixed guy. They keep showing his father to make him seem legit like a legit black man. But he his mother keeps getting hidden, even though unlike the, the ball's mother, Lonzo Ball and them, you know, as far as I know, Drake's mother is not handicapped and she can speak. So, I mean, <laughs> you might, where is she at? But she is Jewish, so they want to kind of downplay her. But the woman and the, 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 the object of the attention in the commercial is that Nicole Murphy, Murphy and, um, you know, she's not attractive to me. But you see Eddie Murphy is on the dark side. But you see the woman he chose to have kids with. See, it's all about the children. Some people say it's about the arm piece, the, the look, to make you look good. Yeah, it's partly that, but it's about the kids. It's about what you want your future to look like. It's about what you wish you looked like. Since you can't do it, you got to uh, go grab somebody who looks mixed or who is mixed. And then you have children with them so you can have the attributes through those children that you wish you had. And uh, that's how that works. And the proof of this is, if especially amongst pro blacks, whether they're celebrities or not, Danny Glover, you can, I mean, you can go on and on with these people, these hypocrites. They either have white women or half white women. Now, I'm not going to the extreme like a lot of people do and say non-black women, because a lot of these people are idiots and they talk about non-black. Non-black to them is a Arab who might be black. East Indian, who is black in my book. And I got to do one on what is black because I think I did that on TRS. I try and put that up there. And even with that show I did, people still can't tell you what black is. They only know what the white man told you what black is. That's what they go by. So I go by nature. I don't go by the white man. And I know what a lot of you are saying now. But the white man took DNA tests. There's this video... I think I got to put it in my like or watch list or whatever it is that somebody put out. It's that channel that talks about blacks or Native Americans. They, they showed the DNA testing. They said they had one DNA uh, guy, doctor, real one. He said those lineage uh, DNA uh, tests are largely for entertainment purposes. So... I've been arguing against those for the longest time and people, Negroes, this is why I say we got to get educated. Once you get educated, then you'll realize you can't take a DNA test, a blood test that'll tell you, hey, you come from this country because there's been so many invasions, so many migrations, so many race mixing, so many tribal uh, mixing. You know, going back to the beginning, I mean, you just can't get a test and say, this is what I am. But a lot of dumb Negroes think, okay, I can get a test. I'm from Togo. I'm from this country. I'm from that country. Uh, don't buy into it. So, you know, these pro-blacks, these Negroes, they get the mulattoes. Keep in mind, black people keep manufacturing the mulattoes for people who are against mulattoes. I mean, if you don't, if you're against them, stop making them. You know, but they get the uh, mixed people because they want that whiteness. And... It gives them an out to say, hey, I didn't get a white woman, but I got a mixed woman. Matter of fact, I forgot where I was going. Yeah. Some people to argue against the Hispanics as well. Hispanics are mixed. Shit, I just went to McDonald's 
there was some type of, I think she was speaking Brazilian. Shit, you could see the lips were black. Skin tone was, uh, you know, that milky, some people might call it olive complexion. She had a fat ass, too. Limited English. So you know the blackness was there. But somebody, dark-skinned women, if, you, if you're rolling around with that woman, people might say, oh, they don't like black women. But if you're half white, half black, then they say, you're a black woman. Some people say. Now you got a lot of people saying that these people are not black. And I think a lot of these people are either Freemasons or white people trying to get that ball rolling because there's so many mulattoes now. There's so many of them to the point now that they're compromising white people's future to the point where mulattoes will be called black and then that white uh, branch is cut off. That's what white people did back in Europe in the ancient, not in the ancient times, yeah, in the ancient times in the Middle Ages. That's why a lot of these Europeans that are dark, dark skin, dark hair, don't even look anything near white. They just call them European or Caucasoid, Caucasian, because they're just trying to add those mulattoes to the numbers of the white man. It's all a numbers game. Uh, and this is what they're doing now in the United States. You see in the so-called Arab world and you see in uh, the so-called Latino world. In the Latino world, the mixed gravitate towards white, calling themselves Hispanic, Spanish, white. They don't, it's like they dismiss any mixture in them. You see Mexicans, Mexican women, they'll dye their hair red, blonde. I guess they, they think they're fooling somebody. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's not a disguise that's working. So you have all these mixed race people. The easy thing is, all you got to do is just reassign them a, a, a so-called nationality or a culture. Just like you see with Latino. They used to be called Hispanics before that. They used to be called whatever nationality they wanted or Latin American. Now that it is a so-called Latino. And I guess that's because Italians said, nah, man, I'm not a Latino. People in Spain, they're like, nah, I'm not a Latino. <laughs> Portugal, I'm not a Latino. They don't want nothing to do with that because they, they want to be associated with white. That's why. They don't want to be associated with non-white. That's why they don't want to call themselves the Latino. So these guys, these pro-blacks, these uh, athletes, when they get these women, Eddie Murphy with his Nicole Murphy, Murphy he wanted those children. He wanted the, uh, and same thing with the Mel B, even though she's looking good, but, you know, she can't keep a man because she's too freaky. She's a what they call a darker mulatto. Uh, well, I, you know what? I, I'll backtrack on her because they didn't really want her whiteness in her. I think she was just plain looking good, so I think that's what that was all about. But for the whiter ones, they want the white attributes. That's what it is. And a lot of darker mulattoes wish they could be white as well. Some of them settle for being black. But then others, they go get a white mate to try and have whiter looking kids. Victoria, Victoria uh, Rowell. You see her uh, daughter. She's white. The daughter smiles a lot. The other kids are black. So it's like um, even though her daughter is a quarter black, so to speak, but she looks all white. You could, I don't know about the relationship, how that worked out. Obviously, you know, things didn't work out with the white man. We don't know if uh, Victoria went out and purposely got a black man to uh, have kids with, like, oh, I'm fed up with the white people. They don't really want to see me as white. But, you know, I had to have the white kids since I'm half white to, just to prove that I'm half white to the public, you know. There are a whole bunch of different scenarios. That they go on, but when it comes to black people who are not half white mixing with uh, mixed people or white women or white people, white, I say white people, it's because they want those attributes of white. This is why you see most of the people who intermarry 
are dark skinned. Dark skinned black people, not light skinned black people. Because light skinned black people are already uh, have the final solution or the final look that blacks and whites want. You know, so they're not looking for anything uh, uh, white or black or darker for that matter. Although a lot of light skinned women, they will go and get a darker uh, man. Like one of my older sisters, she dated nothing but dark skinned guys. And she's a little lighter than me. And all her kids came out with that caramel complexion. And, um, you know, our kids look good. One kid looks like, uh, OJ Mayo <laughs> looks just like him. That exact look, no, no lie. Um, so, if, you know, that'll give you an idea what's going on with that. That's okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going darker. You shouldn't go away from blackness. I can tell you that if you're pro black or if you're a black person. Then you have some people, some mulattoes, some light-skinned people, they want to stay with light, other light-skinned people or other mulattoes. And I'm not trying to say that they're the same because I'm light-skinned, so I don't like grouping mulattoes with light-skinned, but I'm trying to say like Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet. Those are two mulattoes who decide to stay with mulattoes. You, you get the proof of that as you look at Lisa Bonet's latest man. That tells you right there what, what's on her mind. Then Zoe Kravitz, she said that she wasn't black. She didn't feel black. But <laughs> the truth is, even though she's technically half and half, if you want to try and do percentages, even though the percentages will never be exact, but she's technically half and half. But again, going with the white man, what he says, those two mulatto parents are black. So... She's technically just straight up black, according to the white man's rules. Now, of course, we know those rules rules are not the rules of nature. And then you have Negroes who will argue, well, the black is dominant. Black genes are dominant, so it's black. You're trying to act like you're coming with some science. You're trying to act like you're coming with your own opinion. That's your excuse to go get your white woman or to get your mulatto woman and have babies. For the reasons I mentioned. You don't like what you see in the mirror. With your black self. So you like. Hey man let me go uh, get somebody else. And, and maybe my children will come out looking like this. Or looking like that. Something other than what you see in the mirror. You don't like what you see. So you want to reproduce something else. You want to create somebody else. So. See, I like what I see, so, you know, I don't mind uh, recreating what I what I saw. You know, my kids look just like me, so, they, you know, they're looking pretty good. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so, I'll tell you this, man. When it comes to race mixing, here's my general thing. Obviously, if it could be done... That's the way things are done in nature. If it can't be done, then it's wrong. But race mixing is war strategy, political strategy. People have been race mixing ever since the white man was developed and started entering the black world. So it's nothing new. All these people you think are uh, different races, they're really just different nationalities. And black people, no matter how educated, still don't know the reason, the difference between a nationality, a language, a culture, and a race. These are different things. Arab is not a race. Arab, matter of fact, you can't even really call it a culture either. Because <laughs> it's wrapped around Islam, which was the original Arabian culture. That's what Islam is all about. Then the Turks took over. And a lot of what you think is Arab in culture is actually Turkish in culture. It's just like you see a lot of countries where they have their courts. 
with the wigs on and they do a whole lot of these other things. They still carry on the British uh, culture. Which a lot of that came from other cultures. But the point is they, they carry on the British culture, just like the so-called Arabs. They carry on a lot of the Turkish culture. How many turbans do you see that are wrapped around the Fez to this day? You still see a lot of them in Syria and, uh, and a lot of southwestern Asian countries. And some in uh, parts of North Africa. And the food, it's Turkish, man. I mean, it, it is very little food that is Arab in these so-called Arab countries. So, you know, people got to learn. And the same thing with Latin America, man. It, it's There's no such thing as Latin American cuisine. You know, I'm starting to see restaurants uh, around that say Latin American restaurant, Latin American cuisine. I'm like, man, oh, what the fuck is Latin American food? I mean, it, it does not exist. Because Puerto Rican food is different from Mexican food. They don't make tamales in, in, in Puerto Rico. They don't make tacos in Puerto Rico. They don't make burritos in Puerto Rico. That's Mexican. They have nothing in common. Puerto Rican food is the same as basically the rest of the Caribbean, which draws from local foods from the Caribbean. And of course, it draws from Africa via Africa and via Spain, Spain coming from Africa, the Moors. Once again, the Al Moravis, I see, see, I'm, I'm dropping that heat, man, but people don't give me the credit, but people keep stealing my shit because before even you can go back to TRS. I know nobody's going back in those archives for since what? When did I start calling 2012, 2011? And you can hear me mention Al Moravis. Even on YouTube and other channels, I talk about the Al Moravids. Now everybody's talking about Al Moravids. And the reason why I said that is because when somebody tells you that the Moors were not black, even if you want to argue the other dynasties or not even argue about it, go to the Al Moravids and that shuts everybody up. <laughs> I mean, that... that there's no arguing away that. There's, there's no getting around it because Al Moravis came from Senegal. And the reason why you argue that is because the racist white people like saying, okay, the Moors, they weren't sub-Saharan, whatever that's supposed to mean. Uh, they were Berbers. Mention the Al Moravis. That takes care of everything because you, you're dealing with so-called sub-Saharan Africa. And you're dealing with black. So that takes that takes care of everything. So, um, you know, you got to learn how to argue. You got to learn what's going on. People got to learn to differentiate between race, culture, religion and nationality and even language. Because that's another thing. When we see different types of black people. And there's a language, uh, different types of people, bar uh, period, and there's a language barrier. We automatically equate that with a different race. I mean, I can't stress how many people hear Spanish people talk. Doesn't matter how black they look, as long as their name is Cruz and they speak Spanish, people say, oh, they Spanish, they ain't black. <laughs> and, you know, that's music to their ears because that's what they want to hear. Oh, I ain't black. Good. But now we have this movement where Dominicans are magically trying to become or are saying that they're black when they're the main ones resistant to uh, being black. And I saw some video where the, uh, Dominicans were saying that their main goal is to unkink the hair by mixing. And you see a lot of that. You see the results of that. You see a lot of uh, Dominicans that look like, well, not totally like East Indians or some so-called Arabs, but they're, they're still black, but their hair is a little softer. That's the goal. I mean, you got all these Dominican uh, salons, so apparently they, they are more anti-black than anybody else because 
black women go to them so they can get the masterful job that the Dominicans do of getting out the naps. I mean, when you hear black women say, oh, the Dominicans, they know how to do the hair better. They know how to relax it better. That means that they know how to get the naps out better. So you can further disguise uh, who and what you are. See, and that brings me back to the race mixing. Or shall I say mixing with mixed women or mixed people? Because that's the goal. You want that softer hair in your children since you can't get it for yourself. Now, some people might say God or what have you plays pretty uh, funny tricks on people. Because some mulattoes come out with very kinky hair. I've seen some. I've seen some with kinky brownish, kinky reddish hair, which are kind of related. Brownish and reddish, that's the only way it can really <laughs> happen, really. Their hair is kinky, kinkier than mine. I, and, you know, again, it, it causes me to look inward and ask myself, damn, how can somebody be half white but have kinkier hair than mine or half white and have blacker looking features than mine or even having darker skin than mine like if you see Tariq Nasheed's white peanut she's cute but you see her nose and her lips that's blacker than mine blacker than a lot of black people looks like her nose may, may have come from her mother too then you see black people dark, darker skin like a David Ruffin or my man who played on Rock the father the father looks like a Berber from uh, North Africa. I'm going to be honest with you. I swear to you. But see, you see their features. You could even say David Ruffin would be like one too. They have what the white man calls, you know, those East African, uh, Semitic, Hemetic, you know, whatever they, you know, white man's always making up some shit, but aquiline nose, you know, the, the, the so-called Caucasoid features, which when you really look at it, a lot of white people don't even have those features. And the ones who don't have it, the white man still calls white. <laughs> even though they lack those features that the white man says you must have in order to be white. But if you're black and you're from a particular country and you have those features, then all of a sudden you're not white, according to the white man. But if you're a black American and you have those features and you're dark skin, you're still black. So again, I've done the research. Common sense has to has to tell you that it's about heritage, not color. When when these coons and toms say it's not about color, it isn't about color. It's about your heritage. And what is so special about Black America's heritage that the white man must keep us isolated and under control? I think a lot of people are getting closer to the answers. So. Again, you know, that all plays into why people want to keep us talking about Africa all the time. But nevertheless, let me get to the main point. Black beauty, black people's standard of beauty, no matter what they say, you got to go by what they do. That's what I do. I go by what people do. And what people are doing is they're marrying mulattoes and light skinned people. Some dark skinned people really resent this. But the funny part is, it's the dark skinned people doing this. It's the dark skinned people creating the mulatto. And it's the dark skinned people who are uh, the ones marrying the mulatto. So it's like, okay, it's, it's a uh, circle, you know, it's a, a cycle. Apparently, I think black America wants to do what people do in the Arab world and the so-called Latino world, which is to mix with the ruler who are white or white style. Arabs are not white. They are black. They come from a high desert. Why would white people come from a high desert? But the Turks took over. They're white and Mongol. Well, the Ottoman Turks were largely, largely white. <clears throat> and there's a good reason why you don't see too much about the Turks or hear too much about them. Because then the average person put two and two together. You think 
the Turks didn't speak Arabic. They were Muslims. You look at the uh, calligraphy uh, for the uh, Turks. It was in Arabic. And it was arguably uh, nicer than uh, the one that the Arabs had. So they knew about Ar uh, Arabic. Come on. I mean, let's stop playing games. Any Muslim convert, convert is going to learn Arabic. Now, how people speak it, that's a different situation. So, again, I think black America is headed towards what we see in the Dominican Republic, where you see people who are black, but whose hair is kind of straight. I'm sure they must straighten it, that straighten it out too. It might be softer hair. They straighten it out a little because I've seen countless Dominicans, some that look like East Indians, some that look like East Africans. Then I've seen some that look like Nigerians, but they were light skinned. And like I said before, uh, a long time ago, I went to, when I was in college, man, there was this older Dominican woman. She had, um, she had a facial structure like my man that played in Superfly, Carl, uh, damn, I forgot his name, but you know the man, Eddie, in Superfly. Not Freddie, but Eddie, <laughs> uh, Superfly's partner. You know, the way, his, his features. That's another example of a darker skinned guy with, with whiter style features. But she had a, a facial structure like that, and her hair was kind of straight. I don't know if she straightened it or not, but it was kind of straight. And it was a short haircut. She had a big ass. Now, this light-skinned dude I used to hang with, he was scheming on that because I was trying to move on that. You know, she was older at the time so when I, when I was there, so I was trying to not go too fast. So sometimes you shock older women, you know? And they think you just want something, but sometimes they just want something. So he put the move on. He ain't even like dark skin. He don't like black women. He likes white women. But he put the moves on her just to, uh, you know, put one over on me. And then I told her, I said, you know, yeah, I, I tried to hate. I'm not a good hater for people who think I'm a good hater. But I figured, well, let me try to hate on this guy and sabotage that. He said he hit it. But I'm like, damn, I want to hit that. And once one guy hits it, you know, especially with older women, you know, she's not going to uh, mess with the other guy. <laughs> but I tried to hate. I'm not good at hating, believe it or not. So I tried to say, you know, let me tell her, oh, man, you know, I, I, I was, uh, you know, wondering what's up with you because, you know, I want to take y'all some time. But the other guy in the class, he said, you know, he, he was messing with you and had sex with you and he doesn't even like black women funny part is she didn't get upset because uh, I said that he had sex with her. She didn't deny it either. And then he said the usual thing. Oh, her, her stuff wasn't smelling too good. You know, to try and keep people away. Sometimes it can be true too. Though. But um, she was more upset because I called her a black woman. <laughs> That's when her face turned to damn. Why is he calling me a black woman? But see, I'm light skinned. There is no light skin advantage. Uh, dark skin people believe that. See, that's another thing that they do where they want to uh, mix with half white people and even white people because they think that it's, there's some type of light skin advantage in white man society. There is none. But when you're dealing with coons and tons from another culture and they're dark skin and they tell you, I'm not black, that's when light skin comes in, into play because you can use that against them. And say, man, if you ain't black, then what the fuck am I? You can call them black and they can't deny it. That's what I do with East Indians. I urge everybody else to get, get on with that. Uh, <laughs> I call them black. Call them, Not in an insulting way. You know, don't say, hell, that's why you're black. Nothing like that. Just, I just say, hey, uh, thanks, black man. Or something like that. What's going on, black? How you doing, brother? You know, stuff like that. I do it partly to gauge their responses and to uh, <laughs> and to kind of put it into their mind that no matter how you're maneuvering, 
you're still black. I still see you as black. So, what you see with the Dominicans, how they try to mix the, this is what you see with the Puerto Ricans. That's why the Puerto Ricans are lighter, because they keep trying to mix the black out. Dominicans are trying to mix it out, but you're dealing with so much blackness. All you can do is rearrange it, you know, because there's not enough whiteness in the Dominican Republic to go around. So all you could do is rearrange the blackness. But it's still overwhelmingly black. So this is what black America is headed. You look at the award shows and everything else and what you see, you see a lot of mixed kids. You see a lot of uh, dark skin or brown skin, black people with mixed kids or a half white, half black spouse. And you got to keep in mind, that's a lot of mixing. And it'll keep going on. And then uh, this is what you'll get. A uh, Puerto Rican, a uh, Dominican style, a uh, so-called Arab style. And the truth is, a lot of black people, dare I say most, they actually want this. Because you think about this. Throughout history of the Anglo conquest of black people, this is why I made that video. You also have to think about the point I was trying to make too in that video. What they've always done is they've always put all the black peoples down because the British, they were the meanest. That's why they won out against all the white peoples because they were the meanest. When they went to India, they called the black people coons, sambos, and uh, made the big lip caricatures and uh, everything else you can think of that you see with other black people. Same thing with Australia. Same thing with us. Same thing with whoever you could think of that was black. Be it in Africa or wherever. And for the people on TRS, when I said, yeah, black people come from all over the world, obviously they do. So I don't even know why they question it because any other that, that's the other thing. Black people are pretty hypocritical because they acknowledge black people came from all over the world. They say we're the mothers and fathers of everything. But then when you start breaking down the people today, then they're like, nah, those people aren't black. I'm like, man, damn, what, what is the argument that these people are making? See, I stay steady and true to what I'm saying. I don't keep switching things around unless I learn something new. But usually... I don't talk about something different unless I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty secure in my research, you know. So I think this is what we're headed towards, a uh, uh, mixed society amongst ourselves. Because the white man has always ridiculed our hair, our lips, our noses and our dark skin. And if you notice those are the very things that black people keep trying to eliminate via race mixing, via hair straightening, via tacky ass wigs. And some even go through uh, lip restructuring or nose reduction. Nose straightening, straightening with makeup, skin bleaching. Anything to appear less black. This is what black America is all about. This is why when you hear pro-blacks like a Tariq Nasheed or any celebrity talking that pro-black shit. Look at what who they're uh, procreating with. That lets you know how pro-black they are. Professor Griff. You see what kind of women he deals with. Why do you want the substantial number of whiteness in you. I mean, you don't like uh, uh, what they call a Nubian sister. <laughs> you don't like that? Of course not. You, 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 you people are in love with ancient Egypt. But if an ancient Egyptian woman was in front of you right now, looking the way that they used to look, how many of you would be down with that? How many of you would want that Egyptian queen? You wouldn't. Instead, you would take the <clears throat> later on 
the yellow skinned Asiatic invader. That's that's who you would want. That's who you're taking. So we, we see the proof right there. So you guys need to stop this bullshit. See, the, the mixed race woman, she has her pick of the litter. She can decide, OK, I want the dark skinned man. And a lot of the times they'll take a dark skinned man to get rid of that whiteness. <clears throat> And dark skinned guys are happy because they say, hey, man, I'm cherished. We have a symbiotic relationship. She wants to get darker in the kids. I want to get lighter in the kids. See, so this is these are the things that they're doing. Um, so they're doing this on purpose. And it's a damn shame. See, this is why you got to check these pro blacks. With a guy like Sonetta, I could at least say, okay, he, he has some black kids. Even though we only see the two that he talks about. He said he has five. I wonder what the others look like. Given the fact that he's a Dominican, I wouldn't doubt that the others are some light skin stuff. Wouldn't doubt it. So, um, you know, these are things you got to do. You got to examine these people, put these people to the test. And again, I bring up the Tariq Nasheed. Because his white mother-in-law is extremely white. And you can see that whiteness coming out in those children. Uh, and with that, you know, that um, tells you what he really wanted. He does have a dark-skinned daughter. And like I said, she's nice looking. And you would think if he was pro-black, he would want more of that. But... I mean, he's always talking about skin skin tone, and he's always saying, oh, I went out in the sun, uh, uh, I got dark as hell. I mean, <laughs> if he's as dark as hell, that, that tells you what he's all about. And like I said, when he's talking about a guy named Crispy, because he's dark, I mean, it lets you know the kind of uh, situation we're dealing with here. So, black people are pretty petty, pretty hypocritical. And unfortunately, we're not unlike other black people around the earth who have been conquered by white or white style people. They want to be like those, their master, you know. And, uh, you know, I got some Indian people right next to me. You know, she, she ain't looking too. Well, uh, I changed my mind. Uh, <laughs> and there's the light skin one, in case you're wondering. Uh that, that that one is not uh happening, but they you know they they they're working with some money, and um, this is the thing. I know they don't really like messing with Black Americans too much, but what I'm saying is, if that's what you want to do, you want to go in that route. How come you don't get you an East Indian? How come it always has to be white? That's the question, and um, that's what we need to ask ourselves. But then again, we don't need to ask ourselves. Because the answer is pretty clear. And um, the white man is in control. So everybody wants to mix with the white man. Asians do it. So-called Latinos always do it when they get the chance. I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, the Indians, they got the money, they got the education. So why wouldn't you want to get with that? Like this lady, she just drove up in a nice Benz. And I'm um, parked. I'm at my place, by the way. Matter of fact, I don't know if I may have seen her before. But, you know, she has one of those Indian phenotypes. You know, the, the, <laughs> the kind that you see only in Indians. You know, with the thinner lips, wider mouth. That look. Uh, it's not the cutest in the world. But the bins will make it look cute. Um, but see, her success would, you know, that's something you could get with or should get with. But to a lot of black guys, she may not be attractive. And she's darker than I am. She's not, she's kind of light though, but by the shade darker than I am, a lot of black guys probably wouldn't like that skin tone. A lot of dark skinned guys see East Indians as corny, but you see the white women as, as sexy all of a sudden. Before, not too not too long ago, white black guys would stay away from white women. 
Now, this new generation, they, you know, they're going after, uh, uh, should I say the current generation, they're going after white women like it ain't no tomorrow. Because you see it on TV. They're brainwashing you, but black people don't understand this. They don't get it. They don't want to get it. Um, but, you know, I think I said all I had to say because the, the standard of beauty is pretty clear. Whether you're pro-black, a celebrity, or whatever it is, the standard of beauty, we have to kind of force it upon ourselves to accept ourselves. But we don't realize that other people always want to be us and want to look like us. The standard of beauty with black Americans is white because white people are in control. That's the bottom line. And it's just like the standard of beauty in the so-called Arab world is basically a white style because they're in control, the Turks. Latin America, everybody gravitates toward uh, some Spaniard and they don't even know what the fuck a Spaniard is supposed to look like. They just have it in their mind white. You really think a small country like Spain populated the entire uh, Americas? Let's get real. It's just like the slavery uh, argument I always talk about. And I'm going to put that up there too. These goddamn... Uh, I'll tell you, man. man. Anyways, blacks don't want to be black. There are some who, who do. You can tell this because of the women with their hair. They don't keep it natural. They don't try to keep it in natural hairstyles. And when they do... It's from a brushed, half brushed, half straightened thing and they always put it in a bun and that's not how their hair is. See, for you people, if you want the hair, try and get with some East Indians. Then you'll get your hair and you'll stay black. But you don't want that. You want that skin too. So, you know, it is what it is. I mean, black women are disagreeing now. They're, they're saying, no, I, it's more manageable. But why is it more manageable than what you already were born with? See, because you're, you it's, you want it to be more manageable because that's the, the, the hair texture that you're looking for. See, if you know how to work your own hair, that would be manageable to your own hair styles. Like I saw a woman in the store today, black woman, dark skin. She was wearing her, her hair natural. Brushed back in, in a big bun, not brushed back, uh, straightened, but, you know, brushed back in a bun of her own natural hair. Look nice. You can have your own hair look nice. Black people are going to have to start accepting the fact that we are black and we are different. See, we accept blackness in history or when we're trying to talk Africa and try and incorporate them into it, then we start talking that uh, black nature and all that kind of stuff, but that's not the look we really want. That's why you don't see too many of us trying to get with Af Africans too much because you don't want to reproduce with uh, some Nigerians. You don't want that look. You don't want the hair. I mean, we, we got to stop bullshitting. Even Nigerians don't want that. That's why they're wearing tacky weaves. A Nigerian I dated, she kept bragging about the Fulani in her family. Just like a lot of black people brag about Native American, Irish, or uh, uh, my uh, great aunt was, uh, my grandmother was white. You know, stuff like that. You always want to throw something else in the mix. So you won't just have to accept the fact that you're just full nigger. Yeah, and I'm using that language because black people, that's what they're thinking when you're thinking about trying to incorporate somebody else into your bloodline. Even though we're most people are mixed on the planet, but these are things to think about. And the bottom line is white is the standard of black beauty. And now that the white man is letting a uh, black man have a uh, field day with his women, you see that more than ever. And you can't deny it.